So can you describe the, uh, the importance of network, not necessarily the, the concept of networking, but having the right people that you can build something upon with? Yeah, yeah. And, and those are obviously interconnected, you know, networking for getting to, uh, to know the right people to, um, to work with. Um, yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, it's a team sport, right? It's, uh, um, there are so many different skills and capabilities that, that you need and any one person is not going to have them all. So having together the, the right team is, um, is incredibly, incredibly important. Um, yeah, and just having sort of the, the it's quite broad, right? So you, you need to figure out, you know, what you know and what don't you know, and where can you sort of um, fill those gaps? If so when I, you, yeah, if you look at yourself from the outside, where did you sort of lack the experience or the talent and what team did you need to assemble to create this fund essentially, right? Yeah, so uh, if we're going back to sort of the transition that I made when I first started exploring more the business side of of investing, um, I, I started off quite broad. Um, so when I did my MBA, I also got exposure to sort of other areas of the healthcare sector, like I worked for a period of time for for uh, Morgan Stanley, which is an investment bank, healthcare sector. And um, for, for Amgen, which is one of the largest um, biotech companies in the world, and, and also in connection with the MBA, I did a project for uh, Warby Pincus, which is a healthcare private equity shop focused on sort of, more sort of the, the, the latest stage. And that goes sort of, um, it gave me a quite you know, broad impression of, of the different uh, players in the healthcare healthcare space um, but it was as, as mentioned you know when I learned more about investing in medical innovation in the venture capital space then I thought that you know now I can combine so many different things and um, the first um, place I started working in, in venture capital was for um, a London-based uh, firm called Invantages. And this is a um, global venture capital firm investing, you know, broadly in the life science space um, globally, really, both in, in uh, developed countries, Europe, um, North America, but also in, uh, in faraway places like China, Australia, New Zealand. And uh, at this team, we had a number of people with all with background on the investor side, you know, um, from medical medical side or or from the science side and there really you could see how from these different backgrounds me from the medical side have a good understanding of of um, you know how prescribers think about products and how this is being used in clinical practice and then the people coming from the more sort of hardcore research and science part have a very good understanding of you know the basic principles, the mechanism of action, and how biological systems work, and how you know new treatments and new drugs um, are sort of interacting with uh, with the body. So, coming from you know from the research side and going into development and how things are being used in practice with clinical medicine, that is sort of the space where everything is. Is coming together, and you need people who both have sort of the deep science, and people have the the clinical understanding. Uh, it's super interesting because if you think about it, like over the last years, we everybody knows who Pfizer, Moderna, AstraZeneca is, right? And they also know the research departments who are sort of leading this work, and they also know how to get it sanctioned or get it away from the market, etc. So if you look at it from like a educational standpoint. It should be pretty remarkable to see how much people know today about healthcare versus five years ago, right? Because it's a huge system at play with many different pros and cons all the time. And it has such an impact on, on our lives, right? It was uh, such an important uh, factor that we got the vaccines out and to return to normal, which we are now slowly. But, but looking at from like a doctor's point of view, so... It has to be frustrating sometimes, you know, 
obviously there's a philosophical question about how to value a life in terms of can you buy in this medicine to use it right because money is limited or capped at some point and so there's a lot of trade-offs being made from both doctors and of course administrations and hospitals right but coming from the doctor's lenses where do you feel like the biggest bottlenecks are in terms of getting the innovation and the products you need at the right time? No, I think uh, it's a good point that you bring up, right? Because medical innovation is making progress and enabling treatment of new conditions. But obviously everything has a price and there is a limit to what healthcare systems can finance. It's just, uh, it's just reality. So that is something that obviously we, from an investment perspective, perspective, look at at very carefully. You know what is feasible? What can you actually bring onto the market? And of course, from a you know medical background and as a medical doctor, you want to treat everything that possibly can be treated. But everybody knows and understands the limitations of the system, right? And that you need to put the resources in where you get the most bang for your bucks. If you look at some of the examples that people can relate to, is it is it most examples related to cancer treatment, for example, the cost of that? That is a, that is a typical one because there's so much focus on the research and development on improving cancer treatments, and we got sort of incremental improvements with, you know, which all are very important to bring the space forward. But there is always, uh, you know, this limitation of what can you charge for extending a life, you know, X number of days. So that is, uh, that is, that is a trade-off. And, um, you know, hopefully new technology will enable better progress at, uh, at reasonable cost. That is sort of the, the goal of, uh, of what we're doing, right? Health economic benefits, which means benefits both for sort of the the, the financing side of, of the healthcare systems as, as well as the patients. 